Hello everybody, this is Barrett Matthews of E2E Systems and welcome to the Employee to Entrepreneur Systematic Success Blueprint. I hope you have your workbooks ready and you're ready to take some notes. What we're going to talk about today is outlining your success journey. And when I say outlining your success journey, I mean that you have to be ready to put together a roadmap. I mean, we look at it, this right here, we're naming it a blueprint. So I want you to be ready to look at your plans, to have your plans ready, to put them down on paper. Just like when you're building a house, you have to first lay the foundation, right? You have to make sure that foundation is strong and sturdy. Then you start building the walls around it, then you build your ceilings, then you can build your roof. But until you build that foundation, nothing is going to be there for you. So you have to make sure that you have a strong foundation. Okay, great. Now, what we're going to talk about first, when we're talking about your success journey, is where the heck are you now? Do you know where you are right now? Because if you don't have any idea where you are now, it's going to be hard for you to take off from there. Now, see, some of you are in a position where you're an employee. You're working for someone else. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. But the thing is, you took, you took time to get this program here because you wanted a little bit more. How many of you out there have thought to yourself, you know, I know that there's more in life for me than sitting behind this desk every day, than sitting with these four walls around me every day. Is that you? Say that's me. Well, if that's you, we have something for you. We can show you how to do that because our company, E2E Systems, E2E stands for Employee to Entrepreneur. So what we're gonna do is get you from there. Now, some of you already have a business in place, but you need to get in a position where you are gonna make more money, right? You need more money, and how do you do that? You're gonna need more customers. So we're gonna show you what you need to do to get more money and make your business more successful. Now, see, some of you don't know which way to go because you're listening to the people around you, you're listening to your family, you're listening to your friends, and they're telling you things that you need to do. But guess what? None of them are where you want to be either. So if you're listening to people that can't take you in that direction, you need to start listening to other people. There's an old expression that I always live by, and that's if you can't change your friends, you need to change your friends. So you need to think about that. Some of you went over your head, but that's okay. It'll catch up. Just wait for it. It'll catch up to you. But the thing is, you need to make sure that you are listening to people that can help get you in the right direction, okay? Now, when I say the right direction, a lot of people right now, when I say a lot of people, I mean most people, are driving down this road. Now, I want you to imagine this, if you will. You're driving down a road, and there's a sign here. And that sign says, cliff ahead. There's a cliff right up ahead. Now, you see here, there's this dark road with trees all around it. You don't know where it's going. Matter of fact, it's the road to unknown, okay? Now, which way would you go? Would you go where you know there's a cliff right ahead? Or would you go down the road that says unknown? Most of you out there are saying to yourself, oh, I'm turning down the road to unknown. But guess what? Most of you don't. Most of you go where there's a cliff up ahead. Now, you're saying, Barry, what do you mean by that? Well, think about this. Most people in this world work 30 to 40 years for a company, making an income that's already predetermined, knowing that they can't live off of it, knowing that they're struggling every day just to make ends meet so that they can do what? retire broke. That's the cliff. You just fell off the cliff if you're retiring broke. And most people in this country do that. Well, if you know that that's the solution, well, I'm sorry, not the solution. If you know that that's the problem, what's the solution? The solution is having your own business. Well, having your own business is the unknown. You see, a lot of you out there are afraid to venture off into business for yourself. Why? because you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if you're gonna be successful. But guess what, you also don't know if you're gonna fail. So if you don't know that you're gonna fail, stop putting failure in your head. Go down this unknown road. See what happens. You never know, it might lead you to Shangri-La. You just don't know, but you better do it because you know what that cliff is gonna be like. You know it, you've seen people retire broke have to go back to work. You've walked into the Walmarts before, you've walked into McDonald's before, and been greeted by some people that you know should be retired by now. 
Why are you going that same route? Now, you'll say, oh, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. But what if you changed in your life to make sure that that doesn't happen? So what we want to do is direct your journey to make sure it's going down this road so that it's not as unknown as you think it may be. Yes, we don't know everything that's going to happen, but you can set some things in place to make sure that it's not as bumpy, that it's not as scary, that it's not as dark as many people think it is when venturing into entrepreneurship. Now, see, a lot of people live this dream where, <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about, where we're told, go to school, get a good education, then get a good job. Well, you see, these letters right here, J-O-B, I've heard different acronyms for them. Just over broke, many of you probably heard that one. The journey of the broke, or they could have, there's another one, uh, let's see, the just over broke, the journey of the broke, Oh, the joining of the broke. <laughs> Everyone gets together and they end up broke. You see, that, that, that B is always the same. You end up broke doing that. So you're looking for a solution. That dream is not always the dream we thought it could end up being a nightmare. And that's not just in the United States. That's all over the world. A lot of people are not retiring or do, are not living their dreams the way they want it to be. You see, Robert Kiyosaki introduced us to what we call the cash flow quadrant. And some of you have heard this before, but I want to go over it again because guess what? If you've heard it before and you haven't changed anything, you may need to hear it again. There are four ways to earn money in the, in the world. One is to be an employee. Well, what's an employee? An employee is someone who is dependent upon someone else so that they can earn their income meaning that you're going in and you're trading your hours for dollars. You're basically renting yourself out to someone else. And guess what? They're not paying you what you deserve as far as your rent. You see, a lot of people think, oh, I get paid handsomely. I get paid well. Well, but you're not in charge of anything. And if you don't think that, you know, that you're in that situation, try going away for a couple of weeks. No, don't tell anybody. Then come back. See, see if you, how much control you have. You see, you don't have as much control as you think because you don't own it. And if you don't own it, you're captive. You're basically submissive to someone else, and that's the employer. Now, some of you are what we call self-employed. This is where a lot of people go once they leave their job. They want to go, they say, I want to be in charge, I want to be my own boss, and they become self-employed. But really, guys, when you become self-employed, you really still have a job. Yes, you're working for yourself, but you're probably working longer hours now because you have to handle everything. You are what they call, not the CEO, you're the COE, the chief of everything. You have to handle everything. You're working the long hours. You're getting up early in the morning, making sure everything has to happen the right way. If the fire's there, you have to put out the fire. You have to handle everything. You're self-employed. Your, your payroll, everything is dependent upon you. So if it doesn't happen right, you can only look in the mirror to make sure that everything works out better for you. And a lot of people have a problem with the self-employment role because they're not used to handling everything. And they don't want to do it. After a while, they get burnt out. And a lot of people who are self-employed end up doing what? They go right back to this right here, to being an employee. Well, there's another way for you to make money, and that's to be the business owner. Now, what's the difference between self-employed and the business owner? A business owner has systems. It doesn't matter how many people or who they plug into the system. The system is what works. They have programs and plans that they can implement because the system works. Prime example is this company that uses this right here. The big M, McDonald's. McDonald's has been around for decades. Why? Because they have a system. Every, everyone who buys a McDonald's franchise has to sign an agreement that states that they will honor that system. They will work that system. And here's how you know the system works. If I say to you right now, if I walk into a McDonald's and I stand at the counter, which side are the french fries on? I bet you you're going to say they're on the left side because that's their system. They always have everything set up the same no matter which McDonald's you go into. Their system always runs the same. The question is, do you have a system? 
Do you have system, systems in place that if you were to leave the country for six months, can your business run without you? Until you have that, you're not a business owner. You may be just self-employed, you see? Now, the last way to earn income is what we call an investor. An investor doesn't have to worry about people because they have their money working for them. They have their investments working for a return for them. They can sit on the beach knowing that they just could push a button on their computer, make an investment, make money. Have you ever been around someone that traded stocks before? It's, it's just fun to watch because they can push a button on a computer and they can just make money. Sit there, they call it beach money. You can sit there and make your own beach money. Sitting on the beach, relaxing, knowing that your money is working for you. That's the way to do it. Now, basically what I want to point out about the cash flow quadrant is that you don't want to be employed and you want to work as hard as you can to get out of being self-employed. Business owners and investors are where you want to be, where your systems and your money are working for you. And you see, a lot of people have a problem when they start a business. One of the reasons they have problems is because they don't know what they're doing. See, statistics show that people who start businesses usually fail in a short period of time. Now, there's statistics that say that 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 businesses fail in the first five years. Actually, the statistics are more on a 50-50 clip because, you know, 50% of the businesses do fail in the first four to five years. But still, that's still too many that are failing, 50%. But it also is not dire if you look on the other side, meaning that if you're in the 50 percent that it's the plus side, you're looking good. So the longer, of course, that you go in business, the better chances you have of sustaining your business as well. But one of the reasons that people fail in business is communication. They're not communicating with their customer base. If you're not communicating with your customer base, they feel slighted. If they feel slighted, they're not going to do business with you. If they don't do business with you, you don't make money. If so facto, you fail. You go out of business. Now, another reason that people don't do well in business is that they don't have separation. Now, what do I mean by that? They are not separating themselves from their competition. Now, some of you may be out there saying, well, I don't have any competition. Well, you're, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself if you don't think you have any competition. Because, let me give you an example. Um, any of you who watch, who know a little bit about television, BET, Black Entertainment Television, at one time was the only black television network. They were the only one. And I always said back then, I said, they can take two approaches to this. They can take the approach that we're the only black television network. We need to compete with the other networks. Or they can take the approach that we're the only black television network, we have no competition. They chose to take the latter. And because they thought they had no competition, up pops Centrix, up pops other black uh, television networks. And guess what? Their network is not as big as it used to be. It went down. They could have been up there with the ABCs, with the NBCs, but they never kept up with everyone else, and they never separated themselves from anyone else. Now, see, when I say separation, you have to understand that your business has to do the same thing. If you, if you pay attention to football, I always ask people this question. What is the job of a wide receiver in football? What is his job? Now, a lot of people may answer that and say, well, his job is to catch the football. No, that's not his job. Uh, people may say his job is to catch touchdowns. No, that's not his job. A wide receiver's job is to separate himself from the defense. They can get anyone to catch the ball. You throw them the ball, they catch the ball. They can get anyone to do that. They can get anyone to stand in the end zone and they throw them the ball in the end zone and it's a touchdown. But the thing is, a wide receiver on a professional level or any, any type of level, if you're going to make that team, you have to show that you can separate yourself from everyone else. Then they can get you the ball and you can be in a position to score. But until you can separate yourself, you're not going to make it. If you look at some of the older guys that play football, the reason they start losing their jobs to the younger guys is because they can no longer separate. Both of them can catch. Both of them can do it in the end zone. It's just a matter that one is separating themselves and the other one isn't. 
What are you doing to separate yourself from your competition when it comes to your business? Now, another way that people are not succeeding in business is because they are not clear and concise in what they're doing. And what I mean by that is that you have a business and if you cannot explain what you do in, the, in about 30 seconds and make it clear to someone as to what you do to make them interested, then you're not clear enough. You need to be able to make it clear enough that a child can understand what you do. If you can't do that, you're going to fail because re really nobody knows what you do. I know people like that. I know people in business who they, they are very enthusiastic about what they do. They're very excited, but they're the only ones who are because no one else understands what the heck they're doing. Well, you have to ask yourself, are you one of those people? Because, because if, if you're not, you're not going to be successful. Now, let's talk about the definition of success, what it means to you, what it means to me. You see, success to me, my definition is it's a journey of ups and a journey of downs that gradual, gradually reaches a series of, uh, of goals. It's a, it's a series of ups and downs that gradually reaches a series of goals. Now, what I'd like for you to do, I want you to write this down now. Write down what your definition of success is. Write it down on your notepad, write it down in your workbook. Make sure that you understand what your goals are. I want you to write it down because when you write it down, it registers more in your brain. You can really just concentrate on what success is to you. Write down your definition. So what we want to do is from, from that point, we want to start customizing your success plan. If you can start customizing your plan, now it's, it's you. It's yours. You own it. No one else can say this is their success plan and push it on you. This is your success plan. Because, guys, you've heard the expression, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You have to have a plan in place as to what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and who you're going to do it with. You have to have a plan in place. Now, you also have to understand what type of business do you have. You see, a lot of people think that everything is the same. You know, so, uh, everything, fits, everything fits here. No, it doesn't fit. Everything has to be catered to what you're doing because there are, there are different types of businesses. You can be self-employed, as we talked about earlier. You can be a business owner. You can be an entrepreneur. Everyone thinks that entrepreneurship and business ownership and self-employed are the same thing. We just went over self-employed and business owner, but let's talk about being an entrepreneur. You see, an entrepreneur is a risk taker. An entrepreneur would not have hesitated going down that, that unknown road because an entrepreneur sees opportunity everywhere. An entrepreneur might have looked at that road and said, I can start a, a paving business and pave this road. I can cut down these trees and start a lumber yard. You see, an entrepreneur looks at things totally different. They're risk takers. They're dreamers. They are dreamers. But they're the ones who make things happen. They're the ones who look outside of the box and step outside of the box as well. So you ask yourself, are you an entrepreneur? Are you a business owner? Are you self-employed? But I can guarantee you one thing, you don't want to stay in the employment section. Now, whatever your business is, whatever your idea is, whatever your concept, whatever your brand is, this is very important. I want you to ask, is there a need for you? Does the world need what you have to offer? Do you have something that they can do without? Do you have something that makes you different, that makes you unique? Is there a need for it? A lot of people have a lot of great ideas. They have so much enthusiasm, so much passion behind them, but there's really no need for it. Can you create a need? Now, keep in mind, some of the things out there, there really isn't a need for, but it can still sell because of the way that you market and brand yourself. Does anyone remember the pet rock? What was the purpose? What was the need of a pet rock? There was none, but they marketed and branded it to make you think that you needed it. So if you have the right branding and marketing behind you, you can make it so that the public feels that they need whatever it is that you have. Now also, you have to deal with your price points. Pricing your product, your service, Pricing, I can't spell here. Pricing your product or your service is very important. Ask yourself, are you pricing it in a way that you will make a profit, but that people will buy it? A lot of people 
price themselves too low when they start out, and then there are a lot of people who price themselves way too high. You have to know how to price your products and your services. There's, there's no problem with being able to go up on the price, and you can even drop prices sometimes. You have to be able to price it so that people will want to come get it, and you can always make it scalable. If you make your product scalable, that's perfect, because that means if you go to a different market, you can change that to fit your market and still make your profit. But you have to take your time and understand what you're doing to make that happen for yourself. And lastly, you have to have an exit strategy. Now, you're thinking, Barry, what do you mean an exit strategy? I, I just started my business. Well, you have to know business, as I mentioned earlier, it goes through ups and it goes and downs. It goes through ebbs and flows. You have to ask yourself, am I going to eventually sell my business? Am I going to eventually expand my business? Or is my business due to be exterminated? What do you mean by that, Barrett? Well, I'll tell you what I mean by that. You see, a lot of people go in business already with their end in mind, meaning that they plan to sell their business. They know their business is going to be so successful that they plan to sell it. You've seen companies that they start off small, then they all of a sudden they're on the stock market. Well, they're selling shares of their business. You see, you have to understand that in business, you have to know what your exit strategy is going to be. Are you planning on expanding your business? Are you going to keep up with the times and keep moving? Does anyone remember Blockbuster Video? Remember Blockbuster Videos were almost on every corner. They had video stores. You could go in there and get your, get your videos and take them home, watch a movie, hit some popcorn, and you were happy as can be. Well, along comes a company called Netflix. Along comes uh, some, some of the other companies online that you, can, that you can watch, Hulu and so forth. You can watch movies online. Along come the companies that you can, the red box, that you can just grab it and go and then take it back the next day to the box. The thing is, Blockbuster didn't keep up with the times. They thought they were the big dogs and they weren't going anywhere. The times passed them by. Find a Blockbuster now. <laughs> there aren't any. They've gone out of business because they didn't keep up. They didn't expand their business. They didn't know what was necessary to keep up with everyone. Are you going to be that person? You better know what your exit strategy is. Because if you don't, if you don't have an exit strategy, you will be exterminated. You will go the way of Blockbuster Video, the way of the dinosaur. You will go away. You will disappear. No one will think about you. No one will talk about you. Your business will be null and void. So I would say that to, to make clear to everyone. You have to have a success. Uh, a success journey in mind. You have to outline that journey. You have to write it down. Get with someone who can put together a business plan for you. Get with someone who can help you to strategize your business and put together a, a strategy for you. I can help you with that. We do that at E2E Systems. You can always email us at takeaction at e2esystems.com and you can always go to our website at e2esystems.com. Dot com. That's the letter E, the number two, the letter E, systems.com. And guys, as I always say, don't just settle for being awesome. Set your goal to awe them all and take action.